watching it and I'll know what I have to do when I have to Good. Do. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. We're ready to go? Okay. okay. Great. I wanted to open with um, just talking about your background. I know uh. you've taught English many years and you love poetry and literature. And your, you told me in an email that you were a traditionalist. And so maybe you could explain what you mean by that. My background in poetry. Uh, I became deaf at 10. So I was a good reader before that. I loved books. So my command of English was well established. Went back to the same public school where I had gone to before I became sick. After six months, teachers knew me, tried to help after classes, but I really read my way through. Anyway, coming from Italian family, and my father loved opera. He played the guitar and the flute, and he had gotten me singing Italian songs when I was three, four years old. Everybody said I had a wonderful voice. Mm. And deaf, father throws that uh, guitar and start playing the flute at home. Uh. And I mean, no music left. I go to school, get the books, when we, uh, when we had a literature lesson, and to read poems. Fascinating. That became my uh, music. Why were you a substitute. Why did you, why were you substitute? Rhythm. The rhythm. Uh, and the rhyme. And I worked with a dictionary all the time, so mm, it came natural in time. When I was 15, I 16 started to write poetry. And I was in high school, I again followed my hearing friends to a hearing high school. Two poem friends and then the high school a literary magazine. Everybody, mm, mm, good, my father, good. Later, two gathered our cars. Oh, I've been very active at Gallaudet. Oh, yeah, I wrote a lot of poems, prizes, mm, signed. Uh, graduated, got a job teaching English in school for the deaf. Bernard Bragg was one of my students. Which the New York School for the Deaf of Fanwood. Oh, he fell in love with my way of signing. He was a natural, natural actor. We set up the drama club. Very successful. I never told him anything about acting. He was a natural. But he knew how to read the play scripts. I told him, if you want to become an actor, you have to know how to read. Uh, so uh, we worked right after school. And then he, later on, went to Gallaudet. I got my M.A. from NYU. Gallaudet asked me to come and teach. Again, I taught Bragg at Gallaudet College. We became old friends. And he started to sign poems more, more, more. Graduated. I stayed at Gallaudet. 1966, National Day for the Deaf was established. And I asked me to come teach history of theater and classes and signing poetry for actors. Bragg was there, extra, so we worked together. And now Dorothy Miles, wonderful. We got together often, signing poems, thinking of mm -mm, follow the English, but add. Hey, yes, sir. Mime. Uh. Another person, very important person, my old friend who was with me, I can't have that. Miles Acorn, old friend. He was with us in summers, the summer school of the National Theatre for the Deaf. So we had a wonderful time. And NTD, first five years, often took poems on the tour. They would give a play, have a break, and maybe half an hour of poetry. 
Later on, they stopped that, but went for the first five years. Is that poetry translated poetry from English or self-generated poetry from the actors? Both. It was both. Mm. Mm -hmm. Dot and Miles May wrote uh, some of our poems, and they were used on the stage and carried around the world. Mm -hmm. Most were taken from books, mm -hmm. depending on audiences. Sometimes they often went to his third one school, but yes. Anyway, that's going on. Well, during the years I was at both Sandwood and Gallaudet, I taught English, literature, and drama. Uh, naturally, I tried uh, with the class uh, students, tried my best to follow the printed word and make them learn, learn to appreciate the beauty of Ingress. Mm. Well, Schoon, Bragg, many, many others, my time at Canada, we almost never, we never heard of ASL until Storky arrived in 1955. Mm. So we were using a combination of Stand hard signs, finger spelling, and mime. So, of that purpose, we had a monthly literary society at Canada that would give uh, plays folklore um, stories in signs and poetry recitals and give an award for the best person for the year. Well, that was my involvement with poetry at that time. As the years passed, I got invited to many workshops. Shops, uh, I brought Bragg here for six months in 1976, and he was our poet in residence. Made several wonderful videotapes to have him here. Hey, we were great. Bragg is marvelous to see him sign Shakespeare, Hamlet, to, to be or not to be. You're the poet's ring. Oh, yeah. Mm. Do we have those videos in the library? I wonder if it's yeah. mm. some Someplace they should be here oh, in the vault. Oh, yes. If they don't have it, I have home, home copies, and I can make them, have him make a day. That'd be wonderful, that'd be great. Would you say that his, his, poetry, his poetry work was like how you said you can sum the English word order and then you add ASL signs and some mime, would you say it was more like this, that kind of oh, English word order? Structured, yes, structured mostly. Mind. Mostly structured. Mm -mm -mm, yeah. You use the word mechanical. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Were anybody, did anybody at that time trying to break away from the English and saying, can we come up with it in ASL first? Did anybody even think that it was possible to sign that way? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Was no. Uh, I said Storky arrived. I counted. I was there in 1955. He was working on a dictionary uh, first. Then by 1960, he came up with the term ASL. So this is 1960. I've arranged from 1940, I was a student. I got that to 1960. We never heard of ASL. We were in inventing things. M mime, son, mime, finger spelling. Mm. Did anybody try one person? <laughs> Master Coon. Uh, one night, he popped up in my dorm room. Said, Bob, sit down. I want to show you something. You know, next Friday night, we have a lit society meeting. In the poetry signing, I'm going to sign the poem. Uh, duh. Saba Waki. I said, I ah, think they will understand you. Watch, sit down and watch. Mm, watch when my mouth begins. <laughs> 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 
Uh, I was mesmerized. Uh, uh, finished. I stood up. I said, my God, uh, it's marvelous. Something out of this world. Not make much sense, <laughs> but we still can connect it. And your creativity was terrific. Well, that was the start. Yeah, little by little, he tried to influence. Uh, He's still great. Um, uh, so cool. Ooh, um. Yeah, his first one was on TV. Yeah. I remember my time at Canada, I think we had a total of 300 students. So Canada was very selective in Susan who could come in to prep the class. They had high reading skills. Uh, so you see many of them very literate, so we see a lot of them. And I stayed like that to uh, yeah. So that is so interesting because my understanding was that people just naturally ASL had no label for what they did, felt that English was better and in a learning environment or poetry or literature, whatever had to English, then Sophie came along and said, What you're doing with the real language, the grammar, structure, it's legitimate itself. It's called ASL, but I thought that at Galilee, everyone always, ASL always, I'm wrong, I didn't know that. Anyway. And I believe uh, when Storkey conceived the term ASL, he was thinking of what we now call ASL. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, it's much faster today, like modern life on the fast lane. Yeah. So fast, I can't understand it myself sometimes. Oh, fast, huh? He evolved. <clears throat> and really, you have in your questions, in the 1980s here, they had that poetry festival. That's really the beginning. Oh, yes. I remember we were even arguing about the time poetry. Yeah. Uh -huh. right. But poetry to me included the sound. Hmm, sound. But then the group, deaf poets, many born deaf, uh, like uh, what Ella Lenz called I rhyme. Uh, or they say use the word I music. Uh, I am music. I stood that to me who I taught poetry, uh, and I saw the changes in English-American poetry. <gasps> oh, sir, through Shakespeare, I uh, <laughs> In early 20th century, that was uh, the new poetry. Walt Whitman and free uh, voice. Uh, it was a great thing. Mm. They wanted to make poetry hard and clear. Yeah. Uh, less sentimental. Focus on the main object. Uh, I could understand that, even though I didn't really like some was great, some. Mm -hmm. But I taught it. Both. Mm -hmm. Then Alan Ginsburg pops up. It was like what Whitman coming to NTID. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
the same, yeah. Hmm. I forgot the name of the other one. The Beat Generation, Rocky Kerouac. In other words, an Italian poet, too. Hey, Bukowski, yeah, yeah. Favorites? Yeah. I run them. Yeah. I don't recall my favorites, no. <laughs> uh, well, before that, I really liked Amy. Oh, uh, no, no, no. Emily Dickinson. Please. <sighs> mm, at the. Um, at the friends of the new poetry. She's amazing, her compression. I should say so much in a few words. New phrasing, new metaphors. And her layers of meaning were so big, and it would still rhyme. Um, Cohen was one of his students before, yeah, right. in Colorado. Arizona, Colorado, yeah. Right, right, right. And, uh, <coughs> so did you, like, because you're from Colorado, did you get ready to go to Cain? Did you feel you had to, like, get ready in any particular No, no, no. Uh, uh, fascinating. I thought it was great to have a famous poet come. Uh, I said, I'm to take the time. And especially to be with us. He was at RIT for the hearing students, but us was great at NTID. Yes, he impressed me. Mm, very soft minded. <laughs> I ask good questions. We uh, once tried this and other poetry, we gave him examples. I want to see some of a new. And when he talked about that, poem hour and uh, that image of the hydrogen zook box Pat Graber invited came up gave him his interpretation that was interesting there uh, I understand that Peter Cook was shook up himself. <laughs> he begins his own way of signing after that. Uh, uh, yes, sir. It's uh, really to me what Cook and Darby Rennie do with the long poems. It's more like a uh, yes, sir storytelling. I want to uh, ask you about that, yeah. That, uh, yes, uh, poetry in pure form was his short poems work past mm, Pat Grable, uh, uh, Lance Clayton Valley, yeah, I can see that. But both are important. Call them long narrative poems there. Eh? So you feel that when they go a little uh, bit longer, that becomes storytelling? Yeah, yeah, you lose the point sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What if the poem goes on and on and on, but it still has that experimental quality? If you have a theme, uh, if, uh, well, uh, well, you have to keep that uh, theme in mind and to understanding of the audience, you have to, yeah. Uh, sometimes their emotions overcome them. Uh, you get lost sometimes, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
I think it was T S L I who said poetry can express itself without truly understanding. Uh, that, that's true of many poems. For new poetry, even the old poetry, some of the old poetry traditionals hard to understand. Uh, Especially if That, that, that's still uh, evolving, still ongoing process. Myself, uh, one thing to me, when you talk about deaf poetry, you mean poetry created by the deaf person, or it can include ASL poetry that's already published. It becomes recitation. Mm -hmm. Well, same as rock stars borrow songs from others. Mm. Rogers and Hammerstein write songs for plays. The actor learns the song and now on the stage. Mm -hmm. The same thing. You don't always have to write your own poems. Mm. It's important to keep poetry moving. If you want to sign uh, inspirational message, your uh, poetry is both song and I music. Mm -mm. We use both signs in to change boy. Yeah. Because imagine you're a teacher, uh, you can't do that. <laughs> you have to teach. Uh, uh, you have to encourage appreciation of poetry first before they really start to write or recite. Uh, I think also going back to Greek times. Let's, for example, take Sappho, great poet. The Often had someone use a harp. No mm -mm -mm. poetry became rhythmic. Mm. Even the Iliad and uh, the say in Greek language is rhythmic. Uh, they really epic poems. <laughs> well, later on, uh, mm, poetry really was a lot at the beginning before. Cross. So people loved it. Uh, and they started to have traveling singers uh, called uh, rap swords. Uh, in the Greek, it means a singer. I kept uh, alive. Spirit of poetry, appreciation of poetry was a wonderful thing. Hey, it went all the way through the Middle Ages with French. Two bad doors. Uh, but somewhere along the line, mm, it's sad to see that uh, today mm, the poetry we say is really rock song and music. Music, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know that one of the things I learned in my interpretive training program 
siblings, and then later it seemed that one of the, I don't know if it's a, a myth, maybe you can tell me if it's a myth, that deaf people were a, a boy's poetry for the most part, most part, a boy's poetry because of the English, because most ASL people didn't want to, they see the English, they can't understand it, the structure. So poetry feels like English thing, not for me. And that when, this is the myth again, It was like showing poetry for you. And so people, poetry can, your life too. The English, your language can do this. Your language can become poetry. Poetry is not equated with English. That was my understanding. Yes, I agree. Yes, yeah. uh, yes. So, I agree. It's a good way of explaining what happened. Yes, agree. Mm. That's bad poetry. Yes, belongs to them, dead generation. Mm. It was blood that other deaf poets would pick it up. And you talk about teaching poetry, and will every student like it? No, I learned that for years, 45 years of teaching. I tried my best to draw being dramatic, uh, ham acting, whatever, to try to present the message, the meaning of the poem, the feeling. Some liked it, some didn't. Mm, I tried my best. Uh, Nothing uh, Marshall McLuhan, when he wrote his book, The Medium is the Message. Uh, Said, what teachers and people must do is let the student be the poem, be the book, get them involved. So that's what's happening now with those deaf poets, the new poetry. Yeah, it's interesting, that's good. Yeah. They become it. I think that's an interesting thing about yeah. signing poetry. Like for me, as Actors, actresses do that. The out of body experience. They become the character. Not realizing it's not myself anymore. Yeah, it's not a mechanical thing. Spontaneous, boom. Yeah. That's what I try to do, teaching poetry. And lit to drama. Teaching plays. That's yeah, very important. Try our best. Mm, it covers uh, interesting poetry, uh, appreciation, and yes. Uh, mm. It used to be people avoiding poetry, now they're avoiding reading, period. That's the problem. Avoid reading it. Oh, yeah. Reading any kind. I no. know. Yeah, I'm worried about literacy. I'm worried about that. Mm. I see it with my children. Two boys, yeah. they don't want to read. I know. 
don't understand it, it's more interesting than anything you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> There's worlds waiting in the book. Come on. <laughs> what are you gonna do? They need they need one piece who can light a spark. Ah, happened to me. Happened to brag. Happened to some of my best students. Willie Conley, Paul's Einstein, Adam. Yes. Two or three, two or three. I should have gone to more, but mm, I was, uh, I was writing two books, great deaf Americans. I was setting up two new courses in deaf studies or so doing research. What else? Oh, I was one of three assistant editors for the Gallaudet Encyclopedia. Five years of work. That was during that period, yeah, so and I should have got to more, but um. Do you remember? And in the cellar, uh, yeah, I went a few times, mm -hmm, down for what then? The same uh, young boy now, Jeremy Quirrell, uh, he's trying that. Mm -hmm. Good for him, yeah. Yeah. I gave him a copy of the Well, I finished so what? My school did uh, the, uh, well, I know about uh, the new poetry. I had the impact of what Whitman and others had, so I saw that is coming. Mm -hmm. Same with the sign. Uh, that first time I didn't agree, but then later on I saw, ah, uh, that's, that's really expression the important thing. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't have to be understood fully, but still we can appreciate it. It's like mm, painting of Picasso Dali, uh, sculptures of Henry Morse. Time we don't understand, but we can appreciate it. Uh, same it's thing. Feeling. It uh, like feeling. Yeah, like feeling. Uh. Like I was so used to traditional signs, and now mm -hmm, it's this time to around 1980s. That's the time, but hey, yes, sir, how? Hey, yes, sir, begins to. <laughs> Atom bomb, really. Oh. oh. <laughs> I wish I had uh, written it, or well, not written, but I they composed it in poetry form, their own poetry, but connected with protests. Mm. But then they talk about flowers, things I, mm, they should have thrown interest in political issues. Hey, hey. That's what the beat generation did. Even if they had to start using uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like Ginsburg, it was interesting when he was there. We asked him to read his poems. Uh, uh, mm, mm, in a sense. Uh, uh, mm. 
I told him, oh, yes, I feel comfortable that way. <laughs> I know I would read about lives of poets. Now I ride along a fellow. I to write poetry, smoking a pipe. Robert Burns, I to go horseback riding. To uh, can't see poetry. Oh, the poet, um, son needed a rotten apple in his desk drawer. <laughs> Who knows what many others did they had uh, they had their uh, cool works. <laughs> what about Not you? all, but some. What about yours? What do you need to make your poetry? Uh, well, uh, my wife and I love dogs. We all like the animals together seven in our time. We're often working the dog. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can think of a poem. Oh, I started before uh, at home at the desk. With a pipe or a cigarette, I used to smoke before. Not heavy, but I like to smoke. I like Ginsburg, huh? But with the dog now walking, fresh air, mm -hmm, begin to come the words, uh, the metaphors. Uh, go home, mm -hmm, <laughs> something like that, something like that. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Eighty-seven, yes. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't invited yeah. as a poet. Yeah. And Debbie. Okay, five. Lens. Lens. Yeah, Ella. Yeah. Ella. Yeah. yeah, you have it on tape. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. So it was a clearer. Yeah, that was the old way of typing. Yes. You can do a better job. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. That's very important to have clarity on videotape. Yeah. You can stop, pause, go slow motion and see better. Yeah. Were you able to pick up what they were talking about? Yeah. No, interesting how some write for themselves. I cook what people think negative mm -hmm, for myself. Mm -hmm. Some like it, some don't. Same with me in teaching. I feel the same way. Mm -hmm. Ella Lenz was interesting. Uh, she was asked, asked, asked to write occasional poetry, writing. Uh, 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 some I couldn't get, not clear on the videotape. Um. Well, Frank Valley <coughs> said he would be finished. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, mm. I 
read it, it seems, how can we fix it? Suggest good idea. So we collaborated. Uh, his work, all, and I, I can think of it. But it was interesting. We wanted to hear it now. Peter and Kenny, interesting way to look at it. I was wondering, yeah, that's why, I think it's wise to do that, yeah. yeah. He, he calls it, not interpreting, he calls it cues. I see, yeah, cues. If there's uh, helicopters, he goes, uh, yeah. Mm, uh, Like reading the play before you see it on the stage, that helps a lot. That's why teaching is easy. They already have the book, they already have the poem, the story. Teaching, oh, it reinforces that. Eh? Students, my students, whether they like lit or not, would often say later on, years when meet them again, whose oh, story or poems you serve? <laughs> Teaching, yes. Mm. This is most of what I've already asked you. I just want to ask you again about folklore. Oh, yeah. That's a good question. Uh. I feel like That storytelling, very popular in deaf world from way back. They had cubs for the deaf, no caption TV, no caption movies. But cubs for the deaf always for Friday, Saturday nights. They will always have business meeting. Uh, now, uh, 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 storytelling, poems, just, mm, Often performed in Washington, D.C. They, they Washington had second oldest literary club in U.S. Philadelphia, still. But it's not strong, but still. Mm, Washington second. So, mm, go ask me to go, or myself will go sometime, finish early. People, you want to add? Mm -mm poem or story. And get of that, I told you, they're monthly literary meetings. They were not meetings, they were shows. Two hours, mostly storytelling. Everybody liked that. 
Strike was great. I did that. Mm, doing that. Later on, I taught. <laughs> Good labor. Then that. So anyway, as we students graduated that job in school for the deaf, we would uh, let cub and do the same thing in the school. And that fired up the students because, oh, I give a story next month. It was nice to see that happen. So Later on, I left to teach that guy like that. And Bob and David would have taught that family later on. Bob later on, maybe 10 years after I left Fanwood. They still have some of us on lit society, maybe once or twice a year. They said, ah, that's the trend. But by that time, they had Captain Films, Captain TV. <laughs> yeah. Today, mainstreaming, mm -hmm. we lost our culture. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting you said that people would get together, each school would set up a literary society, and the literature, the literature was signing the stories that was called lit. What's it written down? No. Uh, yeah. It's called, there's a, a canon of deaf lit that's not written down. No. And, and they all call it, yeah, that's uh, not a uh, lucky strike. Uh, that's a side by side. That's the karma school, uh, the big thing. Uh, Everybody called it, called it lit. I think that's interesting. Because yeah. it took later for everybody to say, oh, that's just the same thing. Literally. Yeah. That was a big debate. Ninety-four, ninety-five. I missed second that. Line, um, second line. So, discussion about yeah. what is it? Can we call it lit? Definitely, definitely, we're calling it lit way back. And now we're here going, is it really literature? Uh, um, but they include the stories or only poetry. Uh, they were talking about what can go in. Many the things. Uh, mm, mixed bag of food. And that's, where, that's what I did with my drama club. I formed it in 1969. We had no buildings of our own. I had to use a web auditorium angle and limited one week rehearsal and Friday, Saturday, so that's all. And many student organizations, RIT. So, you can give a full three act play, can. So, what we did, one half would be uh, stories, poems, dances, skits, whatever. Really like a lit club in a school or a club for the deaf. A one act play. But very successful. At that time, NTID was young, growing, 100, stu 100 students. We got, oh, one, four, always there. It was interesting. We got our theater, and now uh, I have theater. Beautiful. I have the money to hire people. Pick, 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 very close, man, a few others. Um, hey. Mm, with three act plays, so mm, 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 by 1977, f no more drama club. Three act plays, yeah, yeah. 
and that's why but we lost something too. Yeah. You're trying to revive it now. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, to see if the Maybe uh, Congress started to give a lot of money for new buildings so we could add, add students, <coughs> faculty. Uh, that was the 1960s. At uh, the same time, Stokey was with the ISR movement. And uh, that language started to change. That's yes. Uh, uh, mm, yes. So we yeah. Mm. 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 Really no, well, yes, I come for the death oh. I would go. Mm. Dead people. Mm. Because they had come from a school. And because that school will have maybe one third of the teachers graduate from Canada, they would use uh, a lot of their signs. But they still had their own ASI. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Cubs. Mm -hmm. One Capsule Films, Capsule TV popped up. Mm -hmm. Hope that mm, what Peter Cook is doing seems he's the most active. This invitation, uh, money I read about in school publications. Mm, mm. If, uh, after he died, one day or three days or one week, uh, poet in residence, school was. Uh, something to carry on fine, or the teachers spied enough to add to what he was trying to do. Mm, yeah, that's it, yeah. Yeah, and I used to go often. <laughs> Uh, oh, that's good to know. Uh, C-A-I-D, good. In, you know, their topic this year, the Marilyn and Jeff Oh, that's interesting. Uh,
be great. Oh, if you can include the tapes by Bragg, he tells many stories, poems. I've given poor stories. Poor, I love the poor stories. Videotape a cask of um, Dorado. How oh, did that? I pay one for that. Yeah. Not more political, but they should include that. And so, we want to come to especially to the people and our culture. Try and do what our poets write on. And then make a statement. Get it in print. Print it in whatever kind of magazine, a school magazine, death for life, whatever. It's, yeah, it's right, yeah. So at, le at least you have it there, documentation of future research. <laughs> 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 Of American in them. Wonderful writer. His work tends to be made American. He has other issues as well, but his culture is like deaf culture in that they tend to be self reflective. Deaf stories talk about deaf people. Mm. You know, they talk about what happens to them in everyday life, like the hotel story, you know, uh -uh, like that one dark. What I try to do with RIT, I taught uh, lit in RIT from the beginning. I always had one class, how many different hats I use in NTID, my teaching vestibule English. Uh, that one class, I kept one foot in RIT. Uh, mm. When I retired from the dead, I taught full time. Everything Shakespeare, modern poetry, American novel. I saw 1970s uh, rise of uh, woman studies, but um, African American studies, Asian American studies, Latin America, time for studies. So I started. Tough characters and a lit. Hard to find, but mm -mm -mm -mm. then I would start up a class, maybe 20, 25 students, get five, six, seven, eight hearing students in the class. A lot of discussions. Often uh, we would discuss the deaf experience. How was your experience similar to a character in this story, novel or play? Uh, 
Das ist aber... But as interpreter of poetry carrying on, he is top so beautiful, and he can make the whole arrange. That's how parents will die for. How he still put it together and make it so clear, star, wonderful, yeah. I'm proud of him. Ooh. Yeah. Uh. 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 To get a decent fan when I told him again, I gathered that, and then later on become colleagues at the National Theatre for the Die for Work to gather. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Oh, exactly. Mm. Paralyzed, can't get out of the house unless special van. But he's still active translating plays for Fuller's Shakespeare Theater, Irene Stays in Washington, D.C. He's called a son and master. He lives in Maryland. Yeah, yeah. Still living. Uh, today I may saw a visit in here. Tim McCarthy. Say you must love him, but he's okay, fine. I said, I know we merely sort of often, yeah, yeah. How active he is translating stuff. And he finished writing the book. I want to see that. It's coming out. Yeah, I want to see that. Yeah. I gave him, he asked me, stories of him. How he gave the job of walking for the first time. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, 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 you better. Yeah. Ella, Ella, where is California. Mm. Mm. Every Oh, 
اصلا تو بس انت ها را هیا هیا بعد لو ای بنو بی فو یو آیز بعد رو ای کوای دایز Isn't that great? Uh, wow. So that wow. Room, Jennifer, you were here and you were here and you're talking back and forth. And in my video for two hours, it's same room, same book now. See, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. What's the title? Pay us at that special yes. program. Wow. I see. Yeah. Uh, so you never know if it's in the TV guide. Yeah, you have to. Uh, yeah. And that, that book is in that bookstore. Yeah, they have a copy. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get you. Know, I knew about the program. I didn't know the program. Yeah. I came home. Hey, I'm going to search for the book. I didn't know that. Email Peter. Email Peter. That's great. Uh. I have no more to ask. Hello. You have plenty, oh, <laughs> you have to cut, 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 yeah. And you, you got others that will come. Yeah. Peter Cook and the others. Mm -hmm. August. Yeah. Mm, great. That's great, yeah. He made some good videotapes, yeah, good, good. Um, the poetry, good, really good. Uh, yes, uh, and he has what you call a persona. That's a brag, to have that. Very clear. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Thank you. Ooh, a 
like that. Good for you. Yeah. Keep the flame alive. Yeah. That's the goal. Yeah. That's the goal. <laughs> Thank you for okay.